He's back. Jake Lisko is here. And not only Jake, you're going to hear from Willie Anderson as we talk about the Bengals ring of honor and Joe Burrow. You are locked on Bengals, your daily Cincinnati Bengals podcast, part of the locked on podcast network, your team every day. Hi again, everyone, and welcome in to the Locked on Bengals podcast. I'm James Rapine. He is Jake Lisko. Thank you so much for making us your first listen. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. We're over 16,000 of you on YouTube have subscribed or follow wherever you get your podcast. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of the NFL. Make every moment more with FanDuel. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on today to get started. And Jake, well, we're uh, we're back at it. You're back at it. You've been traveling a bit, and uh, well, we have Willie Anderson coming up. So, as as much as it's uh, exciting uh, to to have you back, I think he's kind of uh, there's a big seventy one shadow above you right now. Willie has great things to say whenever he talks about football, and I'm excited for everyone to get to hear what he has to say about Joe Burrow, what he has to say about the Ring of Honor. He's of course in the Ring of Honor. And that's going to be where we're starting today, right? And, and that's the conversation. We didn't get to have it last week because, like you said, I'm traveling. And unfortunately, I managed to catch a, a travel bug. But here I am anyway as I wrap up my trip. And uh, it's starting to get a little more complicated, perhaps a little bit less unanimous, although we never get the results of the voting, right? We, we never know exactly you know, who's been voted for, but it seems to me that this is probably Chad's year, I would think. Mm -hmm. And there there are going to be a lot of people, though, that I think look at it and say, let's go for the guys that have been retired longest first. So it's going to be really interesting this year because I, I think that there are a lot of ways that this voting could go. Yeah, I, I agree. And the, the 13 nominees, the voting lasts until June 9th for season ticket holders. The 13 nominees, I'll just read them in alphabetical order. Jim Breach, James Brooks, Chris Collinsworth, Corey Dillon, Boomer Esiason, David Fulcher, Chad Johnson, Tim Crum Rye, Dave Lapham, Max Montoya, Lamar Parrish, Bob Trumpy, Reggie Williams. We get into this with, with Willie coming up and, and talking about it. I don't see a guy on the list that shouldn't be in the ring of honor. The yeah. hard part is, is what what do you want this to be? Do you want this to be a let's play catch up and go in chronological order? Because then Bob Trumpy is a no brainer. Lamar Parrish is obviously a no brainer. Uh, you, you know, you could go in in order like that of when they played because a lot of those guys should have went in, in the nineties, which would have been a really nice distraction, I think from what the nineties were for the Bengals, <laughs> but they didn't go that route. And so to me, everyone knows how I feel about Chad. I thought Chad should have went in last year. I just I think that that's the the tough part is Chad is as influential as anyone not named Joe Burrow I guess now uh, in this century and uh, by far like it's not even close uh, Marvin I guess Marvin yeah. could be uh, the, you know the other one but Chad is right there so I, I'm I, I'm a bit biased there I think because I, I grew up with him at the same time there has been a a really loud call for Lamar Parrish and it's someone that I didn't watch and I do get the the wanting to go in chronolog chronological order too he was a six-time pro bowler with the Bengals so I get it electric return man all of those things people if you talk to people that watch both of them in real time Lamar Parrish and Ken Riley there are a lot of Bengals fans that think Lamar Parrish was the better player and I'm not disrespecting Ken Riley they just think both should be in the hall of fame so that's the one that that I think could potentially derail Chad is if Lamar Parrish, if if these longer term season ticket holders vote for Lamar Parrish, which by the way, wouldn't be mad at, but but that's just one I would mention because I think he's he's got a real shot this year. Well, and that's how that's how the voting works, right? Is the longer you've been a season ticket holder, the more votes you get. Yep. And so exactly. that's so potentially Isaac Curtis last year. That's that's a big reason, I would imagine. And how many players, two players still? Is that two. right? Okay. Yep. So what about Chad and Parrish? Or is this like 
Boomer Esiason, we got to get Boomer in at this point, kind of thing. There's only been two guys that have won MVP in the history of the franchise. How does he? How does he not in? Like I, I'm not yeah. saying that Boomer's numbers stack up to, you know, Joe Burrow's today, but it's a different league. Like I, I don't know how you leave Boomer out another year. And and so that's I, I come down to Joe uh, to Joe. Well, he will be in. Don't worry, Boomer and Chad. <laughs> That's who I come down to, but Lamar's right there too. So do you go Boomer Lamar? And is Chad on the outside looking in another year? Which I'm not on board with, but I understand if you want to go that route. I, I can't really debate Boomer. He's got an MVP. Yeah, and the Super Bowl appearance and, and the tenure yeah. he's had and the impact that he had. I mean, if you're going by impact, quarterback, right? Get your sure. best quarterbacks in there. Get your most influential player, Chad Johnson, in there. But then you can go back certainly to some of those really great defenders earlier chronologically. And there's a great argument there too. So, you know, the, the thing about the ring of honor, I, I don't think you can really go wrong. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's a, uh, how long can you keep some of these really influential recent guys out to keep going with the, the historical grades versus, well, they've waited long enough. Let's, let's pay our respects to the guys that did it first. And, and that's a difficult thing to resolve, I think. Yeah, it is. It is. And just a few other names, I, like James Brooks, Corey Dillon. That one's interesting because people in our generation will obviously say Corey Dillon, but you look at James Brooks and what he was able to do on the ground through the air, what he was able to do for Boomer and in that offense in the late 80s. And he was a, a game changer at running back. And so well, with Corey, a lot of guys, there's the whole way that it ended – and, and that might put some fans off, right? And that could impact how long it takes for Corey to get it. It's cool that Corey's on the list, though. I mean, that's that's a nice thing that the Bengals did. They're not, you know, no sour grapes there, right? Like, they're giving the fans the opportunity to, to say sure. Corey Dillon should be in. He, he carried a lot of bad teams. I think that's yeah. the part. And, and Willie talks about Corey coming yeah. up, and obviously they were teammates. He was also teammates with Boomer, which I think is interesting when Boomer came back in 96 yeah. and, and Boomer leads them to four and one down the stretch. And that was his last year. Then he pulls the Tony Romo and goes and, and works in, in broadcasting, but um, pulls the Tony Romo. It's just the, the more recent reference for people. Um, but yeah, I think it's a fun debate and, and ultimately you can complain about the process a bit or man they should put more in and, and willie and i do a little bit of that coming up but ultimately I, I come back to thank you for giving us this to debate <laughs> because i remember a few years ago for all Bengals, i put together a hypothetical ring of honor i'm glad i don't have to do that anymore i'm glad i don't have to say here's who would be in that this is this is it here are the nominees here here's who i think should be in it's much much simpler and we can have these debates and discussions and it kind of gives you like a senior day or homecoming game vibe for that one home game a year when they do the induction like it's a little something extra for that game and you know i got to see it the first year they did it in that jacksonville thursday night game that was really cool and i think that's a, a cool thing to do and so that would be the argument on not just putting all these guys in because i think the argument to just all right let's just let's just catch up and when yeah. we have to put guys in in the future we'll do it but on the other hand, you know, they do get this really cool event one time a year for the next, what, six years or so until all of these guys are. And then, like, what's going to happen when we get down to five guys? Are they going to start adding some more players to the list? Gino, AJ, Andy Dalton. Like, th then you just get into the next the next. Leon wave. Hall. M Marvin Lewis. Yeah. That would I mean, be interesting. Th those are going to be some, like, because of the recency of it and the social media era aspect of it, those will probably be, like, the more hotly contested. Maybe. Names, right? James be Harrison. Oh, wait. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> oh. take, let's go. I'm James. Up next, should we do Willie? You got let's talk to Willie. Let's hear what Willie has to say about Joe Burrow because – one of the one of the greatest, if not the greatest, right tackle of all time on the Cincinnati Bengals, and potentially the greatest quarterback of all time on the Cincinnati Bengals. What's better? Yeah. Let's let's yeah. get into that next. But first, today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. FanDuel is a one stop shop for all things sports wagering, and right now, new customers get a no sweat first bet up to two thousand five hundred dollars, two five zero zero, baby. All you have to do 
is go to fanduel.com slash locked on to get a no sweat first bet up to $2,500 in bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. And yes, we don't know who's going to be in the NBA finals, which means you can use that no sweat first bet on game seven, Jimmy Butler versus a Boston Celtics team that, that seems determined to make history. Whether it's that, whether it's NFL futures bets, whether it's all things Major League Baseball, you can wager in one spot. FanDuel.com slash locked on to get a no sweat first bet up to $2,500. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. We've got a lot of Willie Anderson to listen to here. Some really great thoughts coming up on the Ring of Honor and what better perspective to get than Willie on the Ring of Honor. That'll be in our final segment of the show, but let's hear first what he has to say about the current quarterback of the Cincinnati Bengals, the guy who is a reason this team is where they are, if we're totally honest right now. Joe Burrow, let's hear that conversation. It's the Willie Anderson Lineman Academy <laughs> Summit coming to Lakota East High School May 30th and 31st. Make sure you sign up today. Let's. Uh, you mentioned Joe Burrow and in, in the great quarterbacks and the legacy that the Bengals have had. And you you were on the team when Boomer came back for a yeah. year. And I know it was brief, and I know that was – kind of an awkward situation with Jeff Blake in town as well because he had kind of emerged as the guy and then mm -hmm. there were questions they bring in Boomer for a year but you've at least seen Boomer even if it was his last season mm -hmm. you were obviously blocking for for Carson for quite some time what stands out about Joe Burrow to you from afar obviously you're not in the locker room with him every day but he's taken this organization to heights that I'm not sure anyone expected this early in his career well, I got a chance to talk to Joe. There's a picture I have on my Instagram of us last year uh, at training camp. We, we were riding the, uh, the famous golf cart around, <laughs> you know. And uh, he stopped. He stopped me and, and, and started talking to me. I said, "Man, I, I want to thank you as a lineman, as a former lineman, as a lineman." I said, "How you handle yourself during the games with your lineman? Because as, as offensive lineman, like, we always look and see which which quarterback is really cool with his guys." Which, mm -hmm. which offensive lineman really ride with that quarterback. And sometimes, so I learned this from Boomer, you know, and when Boomer was a backup quarterback, uh, he still he still acted as a starter. He, he would ask questions. He would support Jeff Blake. He would support us. Uh, he would be having uh, freaking uh, after the game, parties at his house over in Kentucky, just, just the lineman, got a food <laughs> and, you know, got some beers over there after the game with the lineman. He was doing all the things that made him a guy that everyone liked. And, and Jeff Blake was the same way. But I learned from Boomer that even when you're even when you're down, you know, you still want to be that guy, that leader. And once he took over the spot, the lineman never wanted to be the guy that, that got Boomer hit. Because he was doing he was doing so many good things. So I remember after the, the Cowboys game, he started the Dallas Cowboys game. We, we, we beat Dallas that year. He yep. came in and gave like every star like fifteen hundred dollars, and um, I remember walking to Spinney Field and somebody said, "Man, Boomer's trying to find him like, for what? So he got something for you." And so I was I was the first round pick you before, so I, I took my money and, and gave it to my backup. My my, my I, I split it with my backup, but I told Joe, I said, "Man, I saw things that you were getting. You know, you went through a beating that the, the previous year, and I've never seen you get up one time and shame your lineman. Never seen you get up and throw the ball down at him, dog cuss him out." Because we, we had a position where everyone's always dog cussing us out anyway. You know what I mean? Yeah. It could be your old line coach, it could be the fans who don't understand that that wasn't my that wasn't my sack, that was a quarterback. And the fans think you get him killed. It was a, it was the QB's fault. Everything's the lineman's fault already. So when you see the quarterbacks who who's constantly yelling at his lineman, fussing at him, you know, I can tell the linemen don't like those guys. But the guys who get respect, who the guy stands in the pocket, takes the beating. And stands up for the lineman and say, "Man, that sack was on me," because the whole the whole world want to say it's the lineman's fault. We love mm -hmm. we love the quarterback, but I've seen Joe take the responsibility of sacks. I seen him get his head beat in. Never gets up, power never gets up, showing his line up because all it takes is one time for him to get up and throw the ball to the ground and and curse the lineman out for the entire stadium to hate every lineman in, on the damn field. Mm -hmm. And I, I said, Joe, I appreciate you, bro, for not doing that and having the character to where these guys, these guys want to step and fight for you. He said, man, I know it. He said, that's, that's the reason I do it because I got my guys back and I, and I want those guys to have my back. So for him, to him to acknowledge that and to know that 
and to be aware of that, to me, is a quarterback biggest trait because those five guys have to bust their ass to protect you. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. I've seen guys not like guys, and you know, you know, you know, guys give sacks up. You know, my shoulders hurting. It. I've seen the guys tap out on guys, but when the guy, when the guys are loved by the guys, you're gonna play hurt, extra effort, give your body up for them. You know what I mean? And um, I've I've seen that with guys like with us with Carson, with us with John Kittner. Uh, and I see that right now with these guys right now. Joe's inspiring these guys, and because. When your line plays inspired and your line knows that I got Joe Barrow back here, if, if I can give him three seconds, we're going to win this damn game because the plays he's going to make in three and a half seconds is going to be tremendous. So he gives guys confidence just by being there. Willie Anderson is our guest. Yeah, I, I as you were describing that, a couple of things came to mind. One, Joe Burrow, obviously his, his dad, Jimmy, was a college football coach. His older brothers played on the defensive side of the ball. I think he may just understand the team element yes. better than anybody because yeah. I, I don't think, I, I think I would lose my composure. I think most guys would with the, the 2021 season and how many hits he was taking yes. in a, a pass first offense. I mean, he got sacked nine times against Tennessee in the playoffs. And, and just kept plugging it. And, that, and that's kind of mentality. But I think Joe will tell you too, was, it's been said too. I, mean, I think it's been said by from Zach, it's been said by Joe. You know, sometimes the sacks are, on him, yeah. you know what I mean? But then sometimes they're on the line, so it's kind of an even deal. But, but I think um, just at, at sometimes, you know, when, when it does break down, he's had the right to kind of go crazy. And, he, and, and I've never seen him do it. I've seen him be frustrated, but I've never seen him show his guys up. And and I've seen some of the quarterbacks, I've seen, I've seen the QBs in the league take a beating and show their guys up, and they continue taking a beating. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah. Sometimes it's talent. Sometimes just you know, guys are better. But I think when you're when you're QB at that position, when he understands that team aspect and how hard and how much trash the linemen already get, if he can just mention our names and and build because because linemen watch the linemen best believe they they watch those interviews and sure. they, they 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 see the guys who always said me 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 I I I I I did this I did this I did this they see that. But, but they also see the guys who are constantly saying, hey, man, this win is brought today to by, by the O-line. The O-line did their job today. The O-line gave us a, a running game. The O-line gave us some time at critical points. And to me, that's one of Joe's biggest biggest character traits to me that he has. He, he can inspire all those guys together. And you can see it, it turned out into wins. Good stuff from Willie Anderson. Up next, it's Ring of Honor time. I'll ask Willie, who's one of six members of the Bengals' Ring of Honor if he can narrow it down to just two this year as the Bengals continue to add to their ring of honor. Willie Anderson is in the Bengals ring of honor. And James, you said, can you get it down to two guys out of the six? I doubt it because I have a hard time doing it myself. I think that most Bengals fans have a hard time, but it's going to be a great conversation. And it's always really interesting to hear Willie talk about some of the teams he was on, some of his teammates, some of the history. So let's hear that conversation to finish the show. If you had to pick two. Could you? And, and if so, who? I cannot, I cannot pick two. I, I, I've been, I've been, I've been one of the ones that uh, saying that it should be eight a year to be catch up. You know, catch up. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Um, because, like you say, those guys should have been in thirty years ago, bro. Like, yeah. I, I should, I should have seen guys when I was playing for the Bengals, looking up and saying, "Oh, who is that guy right there? Who is that guy?" You know what I mean? But mm -hmm. we never had that, and I'm so happy they're doing it now. Elizabeth is leading a great charge. The whole week is a great event they do. And the best part of the event to me is the Legends Dinner, the, the, night, before, the night before the game, where mm -hmm. all the players come back. We need more players coming back, man. Like when Isaac and I, Isaac Curtis and I went in last year, Isaac had a lot more guys at his on, on the stage with him at his storytelling time than I did. Um, a lot of guys in my era haven't been back in a long time. And they're, they're still trying to find guys' numbers and emails and and getting guys back. But I tell guys all the time, this is kind of a new Bengals. It's, it's, it's a new way of doing things. It's new people new people leading the charge. New fresh ideas with Elizabeth and Katie, the things they're doing. So, um, um, but as far as, as far as guys going in, so many guys, man, I, you know, it's, it's hard, man. Like, um, 
I even felt last year, I'll tell you the story. I felt last year, it was almost kind of, I felt like a, a survivor's remorse last year at the gathering because there were so many guys that I looked up to mm-hmm. as a young player, you know. Uh, I tell you, Reggie Williams all the time, I said, man, I thought in 1988, I was in Mobile, Alabama, and we got, we got a lot of bingo games down there for some reason. I was, I was a big bingo fan in the 88 Super Bowl year. Uh, I thought Reggie Williams was the freaking mayor of Cincinnati because every time I was seeing him, <laughs> he would be in the suit outside of downtown Cincinnati. But what I, what I found out was, I was a kid, he was protesting for the uh, the strike years, 87, 86, 87, 88. Wow. So, but I would always see him in suits and tires, but he was a, uh, he was a city councilman, right? So, mm-hmm. as a kid, I said, uh, that guy, the mayor of Cincinnati, and he's, and he's playing football. So, guys like that with, with, with him, but also, you know, I played with a guy like Corey Dillon, who did yeah. so much for this, this organization. One, to me, he's one of the all-time great running backs in NFL history, if you ask me. You got him, man. You got Ocho. You got uh, – but you guys got – I got Tim Crumrock, guys I knew in 88 Super Bowl year. So, it's a hard thing for me. I, I was even one of the guys last year on Twitter saying, don't vote for guys my era so soon because there were so many guys before us that paved the way for us to be here that I thought should be here a long time ago. And I really wish the vote would be more than just two guys um, because it's a hard deal, man. You know, it's a hard deal. Like I said, I felt survivor's guilt up there with mm-hmm. Isaac Curtis last year. Like, I shouldn't be with Isaac Curtis. Like, if Isaac Curtis should be with some guys in this era, and they should been they should have been in years ago. So it's a hard thing for me, but it also, for the guys that go in, it's a great experience, man. Our fans are so great. I think our fans are the ones that kind of help push this along. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And, uh, and I'm pushing more of my guys to start coming back from my era because, you know, guys kind of had a, you know, guys had a bad taste and they left. But I think the Bengals are really doing a good job of trying to turn that around. Uh, I think the more they can keep doing, the more they can keep reaching out, bringing guys back um, for these kind of ceremonies would be a great thing for us because we are behind, you know. It, it, it's, it's tough. You're right because I, I look and I'm just looking at the 13 now. Like Jim Breach, James Brooks. <laughs> Tim Crum, Rye, like you mentioned, Man. Bob Trumpy, Reggie Williams. They should have already Man. been in. Trump, Trump, Trumpy, Trumpy should be got. He's a legend, bro. Yeah, he's a legend. I know it. it. It should be like right now. It should be like those guys. Just, you know, you know. Lamar Parrish. I didn't mention him. Another Lamar one. Lamar Parrish. And, and so, is it? Should it be age based or should it be accolades? Because I'll be honest, I don't want to compare Corey Dillon and James Brooks necessarily because Brooks should have gotten in while Corey was still playing. You know, that's, that's why I want to have a conversation with the Bengals. Like, yo, man, like, y'all can stop this. Like, let's just stop this because it gets too personal. Like, it gets too personal. Like, no one wants to compare James Brooks and Corey to get against each other. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and like, like I said, no one wants to, to, to compare those guys and say who should be in more because also, too, you, you run the risk of today's fans. Like, I have no idea who, who the um, ticket ticket base holders. I don't know if it's a older crowd or newer crowd. But a lot of people didn't see some of the guys play, but some of the guys saw him play. And like I said, Tough. I wish the Bengals would just stop this. And hey, man, come on, let's let's just because it, it gets too hard and too personal. We 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 we're at a real fragile time right now as an organization. We're trying to get guys into the Hall of Fame. So happy that Kenny Riley's going in. You know, right. um, I think I think we should we should honor as many of that guys as we should. I mean, and because because you know, you know, Corey Dillon should be getting national recognition for Hall of Fame votes. You know what I mean? But at the same he's time, he's not even he's not even mentioned. Not even mentioned. You know what I mean? Right. Not even mentioned. So, but at the same time, he in, in, in our world, in the Bengals world, we've had some great running backs like James Brooks before him that should get honored as well too. So I think it should be. I wish it just be just a group of guys, eight guys, man, until we kind of catch up. And um, and the, but but the, but the sentiment, I will say this right here: the sentiment was they say, well, if it's eight, those eight guys wouldn't feel as prestige as the two guys going in a year. I said they would, but they would. I mean, eight eight going to ring of honor is still a ring of honor. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And um, it's a real big deal. I mean, you know, and I had tears in my eyes last year when I, when I, when I went through it. Uh, as I saw my name come down, and I wish all those guys before me should have been have felt that feeling. Good stuff from Willie Anderson. He is going to be in town on Tuesday and Wednesday, May 30th and 31st, for 
a camp that every offensive lineman should go to, not just high school offensive lineman, but it's for offense, uh, high school offensive linemen. So you can learn more by checking out the link on his Twitter at Big Willie seven one seven nine, and uh, yeah, Google it. I'm sure it'll pop up if you you don't have Twitter. But that's going to do it for today's show. We will be back after Memorial Day on Tuesday evening. Zach Taylor set to talk. The Bengals set to. Uh, get back to to practice. So that's when we will have our next show. We'll take a a one day hiatus. We'll get uh, Jake a Z pack. We'll get him back to go uh, back uh, into form here and uh, and get back rolling right here on Locked On Bengals. So for Jake Lisko, I'm James Rapine. Thank you so much for listening to the Locked On Bengals podcast.